Chunk, 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 chunk. What in the world? <laughs> Ooh. Feeling good, folks. Uh, welcome back to this, e- this week's Yawa. It's a great start to this week's Yawa. Thank you all for tuning in. Thank you guys for watching. And if you don't subscribe, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of these awesome videos as well as Ethan's silliness. I do what I can. But we have some really cool stuff today. Everybody always wants to know what we're drinking. Not that we're a bunch of... Mojitos. But they are mojitos, yes. And actually, more specifically, they are... Gin Hitos. We got um, some very special stuff here. Hey, Mike, Mike, what's, give me some of that special stuff. You ever seen Space Jam? No. Are you serious? Oh, wait, wait, wait. That's the alien Louis basketball Jones, one. It's Michael Jordan. It's like a, it's yeah, an American I, I classic. Yeah, I did see it, but I tuned most of it out, apparently. The special stuff. Anyhow, Spirit Hound Distilleries. This is gin, and they said we love to make in the summer gin hitos with this gin specifically. And Chet, who's actually one of our Patreon members, and his family got the opportunity to stop out from Colorado. And this is coming from, it says right on it, Lions, Colorado. Colorado. Yes. And... They had uh, this mint. I don't know if you even knew this, but this mint is actually grown in their their garden or one cool. of their neighbor's garden or something to that effect. I don't remember exactly. Well, thank you very much for dropping off the ingredients for these wonderful mojitos. Today it was like a hundred and something out. So, so this tastes absolutely perfectly fantastic. refreshing on a day like today. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not going to last long. <laughs> So, should we get started with a question? No, absolutely oh, not. Okay. We have some really cool announcements this week. <clears throat> now that we've gotten through, and uh, these are the the Brew Dog. If you guys have watched before, we had the uh, Brew Dog beer. I and think we drank these during maybe the gunfire talk. Yeah, I think that's, that's what it was. Talk. It was uh, how not to introduce your dog to gunfire. If you haven't watched that video, we did a really good job with it. Toot. That was my own horn again. Um, but we did a pretty good job with it, and that's when we enjoyed this Brew Dog beer. So we're we're recycling these awesome little cups. Yeah, they're and awesome. On to the announcements. Um, on our website, we just recently have updated this. First of all, a lot of you have been asking. I believe these hats are now on the website. These ones have been on the website, and we have a third ba, 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 uh, hat coming. It should be here by the end of the month. Which now, is the end of the month is today. Yeah, so Yesterday. I don't think it made it. No, but. it didn't make it. On or before six thirty, that's what they told me. Well, they were wrong. But they should be here very, 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 very soon. Barring the holiday, I would assume we'll slow that just a smidge. But um so those will be up and then something else a lot of you ask and have been asking and want People to know. People always want to know what kind of treats we use for the dogs. What's a what good kind of treats option? are we training with? What kind of treats are we giving them? What kind of bones are we giving them? What are good options for my dog to expend a little energy, work on that chewing and uh, keeping their teeth clean, all of those wonderful things. And we've been big advocates of pork chops for a long time. Yes. And we finally got it all set up so that now you can purchase all of those things that we use off of our website. We have the little puppy chews all the way up to the big behemoth. Well, they're not really huge, but they are pretty good size rolls. And they last last the dogs a a little bit more time. Um, And our dogs absolutely love them, as well as they're easy on digestion, which some of you may know you give your dog a special fancy chew treat and... You're going to have to deal with the consequences afterwards. Mm-hmm. These are and pretty they're not easy. usually fun consequences. Mm-hmm. No, those are the, like, in the middle of the night, you got the dog huh, 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 by the door, and you're like, oh, God, this isn't going to be good. Get him out. So we've got all of those things up on the website as well as antler chews. Those are something that we have been using ourselves for a little while. They last a really long time. The dogs really like them. 
And we actually found a company that we've been utilizing for a little while that we can actually get those and provide those to you guys now as well. So they are on our website under the for the home section of the store. Definitely check those out. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Now, what else do we have? There was something else. I feel like there was something. I don't know. I probably missed the memo or something because I didn't know about half of the other announcements. So announcements, I was like, announcements, questions. announcements. Well, if we remember, we'll put it in part two. Yes. Make you have to watch yes. multiple parts of this this week's Yawa. So. As, a, as you should be anyway. <laughs> Come on now, folks. All right, let's get into a question or two. Okay. And then I'm going to tell a story. Story time. This is a really good question from Instagram, 556 underscore Taylor. And I really wanted to answer this question because I recently saw a similar theme on a, I don't know, it was some group I'm on Facebook. I mean, you get invited to a million groups, some dog, short hair, hunting, I don't know, group. And I saw this video and I thought, "Uh uh-oh, this is going to be bad. And I usually don't comment on things. I usually don't get involved because, you know, everybody's got their own opinion. I haven't even seen this video. I'm excited. And so I just kind of watched it and then read through the comments and I'm like, yeah, well, I'm glad a lot of people are piping up with the same opinion that I would have had. But laser pointers, good or bad? And it was this, so this is the question. It has nothing to do with the video, but it was just very well-timed that I'm like, I want to answer that because I didn't put in my two cents in the comments on the video, because like I said, I don't really do that on Facebook. I keep my comments to myself. Now, if you're asking us a specific question on Yawa, I don't keep my opinions to myself because you're coming to us for advice and you trust us. So, uh, we're not pot stirs though. Right. We don't like to stir pots and, you know, keyboard warrior it up, but laser pointers, good or bad. Absolutely terrible. Bad, horrible, don't do it. But why? Right, I'm getting there. So if, but why? if you've ever used a laser pointer with your dog or thought about getting one, don't do it. Um, if you've done it with your dog, stop. Uh, and the reason that we don't like using laser pointers is dogs become typically very obsessed, neurotic, looking for their next laser light fix. And they will start looking at reflections off of the glass. Or if your watch face makes a reflection off of the wall or your phone, they start hunting light. Uh, Headlights go by your window at night. They're looking for light. And the reason that they do that is because that laser, their prey-driven animals, that movement, that light, they want to chase it. And they ultimately want to catch it. But they can never catch it because it's a beam of light. They don't understand that, though. And so they never get a culmination of that game. And it becomes a neurotic, well, I can't catch it. So I've got to always be hunting. i got to always look because there's just this one chance that I might catch it one of these days. The, the, The other part of that is there is no distinct start to the game and there is no distinct end to the game, um, which is what causes that neurotic behavior. So basically... Poof, the light comes out of nowhere, and then poof, the light is gone. And then that gets them a working dog with a working mentality. They're like, all right, now I need to be on constant high alert because it may pop up behind me, or it may be there, or maybe there, or whatever. And it, it's just anything then. They just they become fixated on looking yes. for and hunting the light. And There are multitudes of other things that you can do that are fun games that your dog is going to love. They're going to enjoy, and it's not going to affect their mental stability and um, fortitude at all. We know people, we have friends that have done this and thought it was cool with their first dog, and they are hitting themselves over the head with their laser pointer. No. Um, (laughs) That wouldn't hurt very hard. (laughs) Those things are like tiny. Right. Um, But they're like, why did we ever do that? We will never do that again. And anytime they see one of their other dogs, like, oh, what was that reflection? They're like, knock it off. Don't look. Redirect their focus. We do not want this type of behavior ever happening again because it is very hard to deal with. I think I have like a piece of mint between. (laughs) Let me see it. No. Okay. No mint. Good. So I have uh, told him if he did. (laughs) 
<laughs> what do you think, guys? <laughs> um, so the um, the moral of the story is playing games over and over and over again with the mentality that the dogs have that we are working with um, a lot of times can lead to uh, pretty severe frustration and this just continued desire. It's like when I played video games with my brother growing up. Okay. I don't know. You get this here. So there would be, first of all, he was good. I played some games and I was a little better at specific games and he wanted to play. So we, um, and there were other games that he beat me and that's a story for another day. There's a story. You'll get a kick out of this. pencil story? There's a story about a pencil and we were going no further into that story at this time. Okay. Maybe later. Okay. But. The, Have another mojito. We'll see where this story goes. <laughs> so we would play at that time. It was Halo. Halo had just come out or Halo 2, I believe, had come out. And I played a lot. I was pretty good. And he would come and play and I would beat him in this one-on-one battle that we'd have. And then he'd be like, all right, play again. And I would beat him. And then he would be like, all right, we're, we're going to play again. And he would beat him and I would play again and beat him. And that would build this like frustration that, and I got to the point where it's like, Oh, I lost. And he's like, you let me win. And we have to play again. And so there is that kind of same mentality. And there are people that can probably relate to that. Yeah. Nobody getting, likes to play the game. You can't win. No, I mean, nobody likes it. Nobody no. would want to continue that. Um, and that dog just gets more and more agitated and more and more worked up and more neurotic and won't quit then. hundred percent. So, Great question. I hope that helped answer that question and why laser pointers are not something that we recommend. Now, the last thing with that, and this is something I heard from somebody else, and it was some, it was a new thought process. And I believe I've mentioned this before because we may have touched on laser pointers um, in some previous thing. I don't know 100% if we have in the past. All y'all that uh, follow along pretty closely, you can let us know. Have we talked about laser pointers? Um I was listening to some other dog trainer and it was a podcast, I believe. Um, I don't remember what the name of the podcast was called. I think it's called like the, the dog training podcast or something. Um, anyhow, they were talking about, they had a dog that had this fixation on the laser and what they were able to do is to fix the problem. It was not a continued uh, game and and depending on how far you've gone along in this, it may or may not work. But what they did in order to attempt to fix the problem with this specific dog is they cued the beginning of the game, got the laser out, and then ended the game with a reward, I believe, with tug or something to that effect. So it was like, oh, and you got it, and here's the tug, and then that turned into the game. So it was like chase the light until they get to the tug game, and that was able to kind of bridge the gap between. We started this with the cue of something and then the dog knows and can kind of relax. They know when the game starts, they know when the game ends and it allowed to that cycle to be broken of, I have to constantly be looking because I never know when this game is going to actually start or end. So if you've started with a laser pointer, you, there may be hope. Try that, but still it's going to be tough. So next question. What do we got? This question was seconded by another person. Those are always good. On Facebook. Both of them are top fans, so we got to answer these. Hey, thank you, top fans on Facebook. We appreciate you. So, Charlene Fabe said, My pup Zella just turned 17 weeks. Just today I noticed she is being protective of her food. I used to be able to put my hand there when she was eating, but this time she growled at me. What is the best way to stop this behavior? Brian Miller said, I will second this. My 14 week old lab has started this with her food as well as her chew bones. Been trying to really be positive about it, but it seems she is slowly getting worse. I don't like this behavior at all, especially since I have a six year old that is with her all the time and has a hard time with not touching her while she is on her bed with her bone. Okay. So there are a couple different facets with this. And And you're not alone. You are 100% not alone. We get this question a lot. People reach out to us. It seems Yala, like fairly more regular. Email. Either people yes. are more comfortable reaching out to us now, or this is a problem that's coming up more frequently with, you know, as dogs are developing and breeding programs are developing. We've kind of talked about how those progressions have happened over decades of time of change and environmental switches and things like that. Um, And this could be one of those things that is an environmental switch as well, because it does seem like it's been more recent in the sense of 
everybody is at home spending way more time with their dogs and puppies. Potentially. I don't know. Whatever the reason for it is, though. It's not good. No. And um, so it's always good to get as much information about the situation that's going on as possible. So you said that, you know, your 17 week old puppy, I think maybe one of them was 17. Yep. 17 week old puppy and 14 week Mm -hmm. old puppy um, that you just noticed today that she's starting to be overly protective with her food. You used to put your hand in while she was eating. So did you take a break from that? And then you just went back to it, you know, three, five, six weeks after you'd been doing that, um, that can definitely be a situation where the dog is like, well, this hasn't been going on for a while. Same with nail trims. You know, if you trim your puppy's nails every week, but then you say, oh, well, I got busy and I forgot and it just didn't have time. And you come back to it two months later, your puppy's going to be pretty resistant to that. And they're going to throw a fit and they're not going to be as conditioned to that as they were in the past. I think that the... The bigger part of this specific problem is it's not just food related. It's not just bone related. It's not just that one situation related. There's probably more things that are happening in day-to-day activities that you're maybe missing or overlooking or that are subtle enough that your dog is sending you signals that you're missing. And and maybe not 100% missing, but even just there's some level of pack roles and leadership roles and the dog's understanding of their roles that really needs to make a shift here in order for them to to get past this and food to issue. be in the right place in the pack with your family. Yes, because we've had a similar question from people that have you know their dogs laying on the couch and then they sit down next to their dog and their dog goes. Mm. Or, you know, they're sitting on the couch with their dog and then they reach over to pet their dog and their dog gives them a lip curl or whatever. Like, I don't want you to pet me right now. I'm just relaxing. And any of those behaviors that your dog is telling you, I don't want this. I don't want my nails trimmed. I don't want you to sit on the couch next to me. I don't want you to take my food. I don't want you to touch my bone. Well, that's not their, that's not their choice. It's really not. And the... The thing that we have to keep in mind, and I'm, this is, I mean, we're going to jump into it. We're real early in the session or in the, in the, this week's chat. And we're really early as it being just part one. Right. But we're already right to Ethan's popular um, opinions, brutally honest, brutally moments. honest moments. Sorry, BBC. We keep trying to steal your thing. Um, Ethan's brutally honest uh, comments, comments here. Okay. So first of all, They are dogs and dogs are animals. They are not people. And if you are a little bit confused about this, you're probably watching the wrong YouTube channel or you're watching the right YouTube channel because we're going to help you through understanding that. Now, I I, want to make a very, 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 very strong I'm drawing, I'm drawing a hard line in the sand here. Okay. They are animals. Um, but at the same time, they are part of our family. And I do not want anybody that is watching this to think that I do not feel like dogs can be, or should be, or are part of the family because our dogs are 100% part of our family. Yeah, absolutely. We love them. They sleep in bed with us, sleep on the couch, They have their dog beds. They are 100% a part of our family. They play with Aiden. Um, And we have to be able to trust that they're going to be okay with things that um, aren't necessarily their choice in a sense. But the key to that whole situation is that uh, they are dogs. And um, this is a... So... (sighs) Just say it. Stop tiptoeing. They're dogs. And dogs are animals. It, that's what I'm getting at. It's they, they are dogs and they are animals and they are not people. So when you are looking at the situations, it's not so much their choice. It's not what they're thinking, feeling. They need to understand that their place in the pack, in the um, hierarchy of life is at the bottom. And if they have confusions of that, they're going to show you with pushback. And that pushback is growling over food, growling over bones, growling over don't pet me. This is my spot, whatever. 
All of our dogs, Kat mentioned, do all of these things, but they also understand their place. I can walk in and say, Psst, get out of my spot now. Hop and out of the bed. Gone. I can s- snap my fingers and poof, they're all gone. They all go to their dog beds. They know their place in the situation. And they they have privileges. That we're at the top of that yeah, pack. But they respect. And the fact that you're having this, it is a challenge because they're little puppies. So they, they're not set in their ways, but they are little puppies and they are challenging. Um, and the best way to get past this is going to be to work through a couple things. A very, very small drill that we do, it, it's called You Will Love Me is one of them. And it's just physical restraint. It says you roll the puppy over on their back and you hold them on your lap and you hold them there until they relax. Now, some puppies are going to figure that out pretty quickly, but then I want you to hold them longer. And they're going to get to the point where they're going to be like, I'm ready to get up. And you're saying, no, 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 you're going to stay here. This is it. This is your option. It's not hurting them. No, it's not hurting you, but it is putting you in a situation where you understand that while they're in that stage where you can still handle them and do these things, um, they're learning. I don't have control over every situation. Which, if you watch some of Thunder's recent nail trimming videos, he's that a we're great making, example. Of yeah, that. and Ethan is keeping him in that position until he relaxes, until he gives in. The other night on the couch, we were doing this, and he gave in much quicker. Um, and then last night, I was holding him too, and he just fell asleep. So we're definitely making progress, and you can too. But it requires very consistent handling. And that is, he does not get up. And you'll watch um, in, did did that video go out yet? Yeah. Part two of that, where I held him for like 20 minutes. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that was the dremeling one. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so the dremeling version, we show how to uh, trim his nails and then dremel them as well. Um, the end of that video, I mean, I held him for, I think, almost, almost 20 minutes. It was a long time. It was a long time. And it was because I'm holding him here and I can feel him tense and he doesn't want to give up. He's just waiting for that pressure to release so that he can dart or get out or scoot or do whatever. And ultimately it's one of those things that we just hold him here and help him through understanding that he needs to give in and submit if you will. But then once he does that, we say good boy and then release him but it takes time. It's not that, oh, he he stopped for a second. No, he needs to relax. And once he's fully relaxed, then we let him go. And that was what took so long. It was like, it looked like he was relaxing. And Kat even said to me after the video, she was like, uh, why didn't you let him up forever ago? And it was like, because he was tense and he wasn't relaxed. And she, you couldn't even see that. It was more of a feel, feel thing. It. You could yeah. feel he was, as soon as I tried to give up a little bit, he would he be was ready to spring. trying to spring out of there. So, um, that can be a very, very, very small drill that can make a huge difference in your dog's overall understanding of their position. And overall understanding as far as like food related aggression or protectiveness goes as well, because if they start respecting you in one area, that respect is going to transition to many other areas. And um, as far as like the food side of things goes, with our dogs, if there is ever any like grumbling, even if it's amongst themselves, like, oh, I want to protect my bone from this other dog that the walked food's by, gone. we take it away. It's gone. And we take it away so that they understand, hey, they screwed up. They're not going to get that reward as for that behavior. Yep. So you walk that- in, you say, hey, this is mine. And that's what it is. It's a very subtle way of saying, this is mine. You don't get this. If you're going to growl at me, psh, it's gone. The bone, psh, it's gone. All of those things. We'll try again later. We'll give you another opportunity. But for now, it's gone. You lost your opportunity. And with the food-related things as well, you know, you can always transition back to working those meals into their training sessions where they have to work for their food and they're getting their food directly from you, which is going to, again, build that bond and that trust and that respect for you because they're going to say, the only way I'm getting fed is from this person. And that means they're very, very important. And I respect that. Yeah, and it comes from them, yes. which means without them, I've got nothing. Yep. So that's an option. And then I know that I think it was Brian mentioned, yes, Brian, about their six-year-old child, you know, not understanding about this, boundaries and things like that. This, Again, we have to remember they're dogs and unpredictable things can happen. And we would hate for that to happen 100%. Um, and Aiden... Our son, he's 19 months old, and 
when he feeds the dogs because he'll help set their food bowls down. Then we tell him, you have to back up. You can't be right over them. You can't keep your hands in their dish. And sometimes he tries to pull their food out and stuff and play with it. And we tell him, no, you have to stand back so that he learns boundaries too. Because like Ethan started this out, they're animals and they have animalistic tendencies and that all derives from when they were wild animals. Um, so we want to be advocates for our dogs as well as our children and them knowing and understanding boundaries is really important. You know, I'm not letting Aiden pull on my dog's ears or pull on their tails or, um, you know, he pets them pretty exuberantly sometime and starts patting them really hard. And we're like, no, buddy, you got to pet nice. Um, so we have to advocate for the dogs by teaching the children the proper way to interact with them. Absolutely. These are fantastic questions. Yes. And that was definitely a really good part one of this week's Yawa. So As we're going to take a short break. I believe we need another, or I need another, or need, going to make another. <laughs> and we will see you here shortly for part two. <laughs> 